Hi there, in this video I'm going to do a photo tour of the market town of Leek in Staffordshire. So behind me here is Leek. Now Leek is very special to me because I grew up here and lived here until my mid-30s. I've also got my own business situated here. Um, I run a tutoring service and there is a link down below in the description. This video is going to be a little bit different than normal because I'm going to focus more on architecture because Leek has 143 listed buildings. Now if you're not sure what a listed building is, I'll leave details about that down below in the description. But hopefully something a little bit different might give you a few new ideas and help you to enjoy your photography. Now, a few months ago, I did a photo tour of Whitby, but what I thought I'd do today is a photo tour of Leek, because Leek's very special to me, but I just want to highlight the fact that you don't have to go very far to find some really interesting architecture. I'm sure every town has a story to tell, and every town also has interesting buildings if you just know where to look for them. So hopefully, you'll enjoy having a look around my hometown this morning. Before we start the video, don't forget that I'm planning a question and answer video. So if you do have anything that you want to ask me, don't forget to leave your questions down below in the comments. Before Leek was an industrial town, it was a market town and it was granted the right to hold a weekday market every Wednesday in 1207. So doing the research for this video has been really interesting. I found out lots of things about the town that I grew up in that I didn't know before. For instance, this bridge behind me here is grade two listed as well. Signs of Leek's textile industry can be found everywhere and this building is known as the Big Mill. It's very impressive, but sadly has fallen into disrepair. This building behind me is Westwood Hall. It's a former stately home and building was completed in 1853. Then in 1921, it was sold to Staffordshire County Council and was used as a girls' school. And then in 1965, it was converted to a comprehensive school. And that's the function it still has at the moment. It's one of the high schools in Leek. And here is the lodge to Westwood Hall. It was built in 1852 that stands on a corner of a road, but this would have been the outskirts of what would have been the grounds to Westwood Hall. This is Leek's only grade one listed building and it was completed in 1887 and designed by Richard Norman Shaw. This is a bird in hand public house and it's notable for its twisted chimneys, which must have cost a fortune to carve back in the day. This is a Roebuck public house and dates back to 1626 and allegedly it was constructed in Shropshire, dismantled and brought to this location to be built here. This building here was built in 1838 as a union workhouse and remained like that until well into the 20th century. Now, an interesting fact is that in the early 20th century, the registrar assigned this building the fictitious address of 251 Ashbourne Road to save inmates being stigmatized by being born here. Many of Lick's buildings were built by the architectural firm, the Sugdens, and this particular building behind me is one of their best examples. It's the old police station built in 1891, built in the Scottish baronial style. This building here is Rosebank House and it was built in 1857 by the Sugdens, but it's got an interesting story. Back in 1983, it was a further 50 meters in that direction. So when they built this supermarket just here, they had to build a series of runners to slide the house to this new position to protect it for the future. Behind me is yet another beautiful Sugden building, built in 1871. It was built in memory of James Ulsop and it was the Cottage Hospital. The 
This building behind me is the Nicholson Institute and it's probably one of Sugden's masterpieces. It dominates the league skyline and it was built to celebrate the achievements of literature and science and the busts of Tennyson and Shakespeare can be found moulded into the facade. This stone clock tower here behind me is the Nicholson War Memorial. It was built in 1925 by a local businessman to commemorate his son who died in the First World War. At 90 feet, it's one of the tallest war memorials in England and it's now known by people in Leek as the Monument. Leek has a series of monuments and statues that have been moved around the town over time and this is the Chaloner Fountain that was bought in 1876 by Chaloner um, because he saw it at an exhibition at the Royal Academy in London. The original site for the Chaloner Fountain was just here where this tree now is before it was moved up to the park. It was moved to this site in the park in 1924 and now it's found its permanent home outside the council offices. Another one of League's many moving monuments is this lion. It was bought from a sale at Alton Towers and it was placed in the park. I remember the lion being sighted here in the park when I was a very young child and sitting on it having my photograph taken. But it's now found a more permanent home here outside the council offices. The final object that has moved probably more than anything is the buttercross here. Now originally it was in the marketplace where it now stands. The buttercross was moved here in 1806 to Leek Cemetery, but when these chapels were built in 1850, it was moved a short way down the path to this location where it stayed until 1986. It was moved back to this current site back in the marketplace. This is St Edward's Church and the building dates back to medieval times from the 13th century. Now much of the facade um, reflects the 19th century restorations that took place but there's been a building on this site since medieval times. Also several of the crosses in the graveyard are also listed. This is one example here and this is the other one. Here is Link's coat of arms and you can see that it contains two suns. They represent a double sunset that can be seen from Leek. So the double sunset can be seen from here in the churchyard in midsummer, but when it actually happens, it's very difficult from this location now to see because trees have grown up in the way and there's a house. So I'll take you to another location where it can be seen a little bit better. So I've moved to a different location on the Leek to Macclesfield Road and from here you can actually see the double sunset. As the sun sets at midsummer down here, it disappears behind Bosley Cloud just here and then reappears again before finally setting down over the Cheshire Plain. Well, I hope that video has given you a little bit of inspiration to try something different. I found out lots about my hometown that I didn't know before, and I could have included so many more buildings. Leek is awash with really interesting architecture, and I've only just scratched the surface. So maybe if you do a little bit of research about your hometown, you could find out lots as well, and get out with your camera and take some photographs. If you do find anything interesting, then do send them to me. And don't forget about my question and answer video, send me questions down below in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video and have got any suggestions of any photo tours you'd like me to do in the Staffordshire or Cheshire area, do let me know down below in the comments or nip over to my Instagram account, that's at the Oakton Photography, and you can leave me your suggestions there. You can also see lots of my photographs. Now, if you like what I do on the channel, you can support me by visiting my Teespring store, where I've got a range of merchandise on offer, but you don't have to spend any money at all to support the channel. You can do that simply by clicking like, subscribe, and the bell notifications. That way you stay up to date with all of my future releases, and it really helps me out. Watch out for next week's video, that goes live at four o'clock. In the meantime, you can check out this video just up here. And all that's left now is to say, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.